I paid another visit to the dollar bins at Comic Book College, and I gotta say, it's never disappointing to come home with Jack Kirby, even the reprints at those kind of prices. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. So it's becoming kind of a habit of mine to go maybe once a week, maybe not quite that frequently, but to regularly stop in at Comic Book College. It's, I think, the oldest comic book store in the Twin Cities. And I've been going in to hit their dollar, two dollar, three dollar bins. And the reason I've been doing that is because not too long ago, they shared that they had recently acquired something like 7,000 new comic books that were going to be populated into those one, two, and three dollar comic book bins, but they weren't doing it all at once. It was going to happen over a period of time. And so I think I've gone in like three times now, and each time I've gone in, there's been a little bit additional inventory. And so it just becomes worth my while to make that, like I said, once a week, maybe once every two weeks to go in and see what new things have been added to the inventory. And it gets a little bit better because beyond them even just being $1, $2, and some are three, and to be honest, I pretty much look at the dollar books and then skim through the $2 books, but the deal gets better because if you buy 15 of the $1 books, you get them for $10, and if you buy 15 of the $2 books, you get that for $20. So if you find 10 for a dollar a piece, it's like getting in another five for free or knocking a third off the price. And same thing for the $2 book. So definitely worth my time to go digging through there to see what I could find. And the last time I showed you some books that were like, there were some Transformers, almost a full volume of a title that I've been trying to collect that I was able to find, as well as it may have been some Ultimate X-Men, I don't recall. But there'll be a banner up here if you wanna check out those uh, comics after you're done watching this one. But Today, we're going to look at another 15 books that I was able to scrounge up on my last visit. So we got this stack here, and these are older books. These are more early modern age, bronze age books. And as you heard me say in the intro, I got some Jack Kirby, granted in reprint, but when you buy 15 books for $10, you're spending 66 cents a piece. And to get Jack Kirby, even in low to mid-grade condition in a reprint, it's just cool. So in a minute, we're going to turn the camera around and I will give you a closer up look at these books. But before we do, let me say, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for checking it out. And if you like this kind of content, comic book related, whether it's new comic book hauls, back issue comic book hauls, uh, look at an omnibus that I recently started, omnibus, looking at omnibus that I started uh, getting into recently, or just kind of other topics in general for comic books, then go ahead, take a second and hit that subscribe button. And then as you watch, if you see something you like, give it a thumbs up and please let me know your thoughts and questions down below. Well, now that we got the housekeeping out of the way, let's swing the camera around. And we'll take a closer look at these books. All right, here is the stack of books. So let's go ahead, get these out and we'll go through these one by one. First book up, this is one of the, I would say it's the second most recent book that I picked up at the sale. I have wanted to collect the Civil War issues from Amazing Spider-Man. And I'm also working on the uh, Straczynski, uh, not the whole Straczynski run, but the Straczynski portion of the run that John Romita Jr. drew. So that's kind of earlier in the volume two issues but then you jump ahead and i do want to get these civil war issues i have the civil war event but i wanted to get more of the kind of the the focus in on spider-man's story and what i did not know when i picked this up but then figured it out when i opened it and looked at it this is the issue that really sets up the events of one more day because it's in this issue that aunt may gets shot the bullet comes in the window. It's supposed to be, you know, targeting Peter and he gets Mary Jane out of the way. And then they turn around and lo and behold, Aunt May gets shot. So did not remember that that was this issue, but glad to have it. And I think this is the first of the Civil War tie-in issues for ASM that I have so far. So one down and still several to go.
I am not a collector of Conan the Barbarian, but I do like these Marvel 25th Anniversary, this framed border cover art. And it was a theme that they did through, I don't know how many total issues there were that had this treatment, but it was there. It's in good shape. And again, with the deal like I got, these were like 65 cents a piece. So that was a, a cool pickup and definitely wanted to grab that because I don't see this one too terribly often. The next few books I'm going to show you come from this volume. This is Marvel Age. It wasn't technically a comic book in that it was telling you stories within its pages. It was instead Marvel's official news magazine. So you get previews of upcoming titles, you get interviews with creators, and it was a fun book that I picked up some back when they came out. And when I was collecting them, it was probably in the, in the higher... Uh, the higher double digits of so the 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. And since then, uh, there have been some of these that I've added to my wish list. I'm not trying to get the whole volume, though. I mean, if I'm honest, it's one of those things. You can get these pretty inexpensively, 50 cents a dollar a piece and in good shape. So I wouldn't be surprised if down the road I'm just building out the whole volume. But for now, I'm focused on some of the issues primarily based on either cover art or some story that's covered inside. And most of them focus around the X-Men. This one I picked up, I just like the uh, Bill Sienkiewicz cover on it. Most of the issues that I've added to my wish list are there because of the cover art. And there are a few minor keys from this volume, but nothing with any kind of staggering value. So if you're looking to add this to your collection, it's a, it's a pretty reasonable feat to take on. Here I also picked up issue number 32 with an X-Men cover, Alpha Flight. Here's issue 55. This one, I, got, I like that red and white Iron Man uh, suit on there and I don't think it's meant to be, but this red and blue, the way they wrote the Marvel Age, reminds me of when they tried to do the old school type of 3D uh, artwork. I have a couple comics. One of them is an ALF comic, and then I have a couple Transformers comics from the 80s, 90s era that were intended to be 3D and actually came with 3D glasses, but it always, when you don't use the glasses, it has that you know double imaging type of a an effect to create the 3D when you put the glasses on, but the way they did the title there just reminds me of that type of art where it's intended to be 3D. Jumping ahead, this is actually the newest book that I got. And you know, you look through these dollar bins and sometimes you find really pristine condition copies of modern books for a dollar fifty cents, and that's great. Other times, you find modern, you know, very recent back issues of comics. Like this only came out a few months ago. You can find them for a dollar fifty cents, but those other copies are usually damaged. And I should have looked a little closer because, upon first inspection, this looks great. No noticeable defects at all. But then I took it out of its bag, flip it over. And here, womp womp, you got the fail there, something. And there were a couple copies of this, so I should have known that something must have been um, caused this damage, perhaps in shipment. I don't know, but this clearly looks like something was rubbing here and here. Will that come off? I don't know. I've never uh, tried to clean a comic book before. It's something eventually I'd like to, to start to learn, but I haven't done any of that yet. So for the short term, I have it. I can read it. I do like the cover, it's pretty cool. And I'll admit that if I do see this again for 50 cents or a dollar, something in that range, then, and it's in a you know much better shape, I'll probably grab it just cause that'll bother me a little bit. But at the same time, if I don't ever find another one, then it's not gonna bother me either. Cause once I read it, it's gonna go in that bag and board and it'll be in a, in a short box. And the odds are whatever I'll see again will be just that cover there. So, you know, we'll see how it goes.
Now we're going to go back. The rest of the books now are going to be Bronze Age books. And some of them are books that I picked out specifically because, I, you know, my first time through the boxes. There's a few, though, this might be one of them, that I grabbed just because I had already found like 10 or 11 books. And remember, that deal is that if you get 15 it works out to be the same price as if you find 10. So you can either look at it as getting five books for free or those additional five books knock a third of the price off of all the books you got. So I went back after finding those 11 and said, all right, let me just, let me just get four more to get to 15 books. And it doesn't matter which ones I grab. So I grabbed this Avengers. I'm not collecting this part of the Avengers volume, uh, but it, it is a cool older cover and like I said in the, in the end some of these books wind up basically being free here's where we start to get into the Kirby art this is a title Marvel Super Action it does reprints of Silver Age stories it started out the first gosh was it 13 or so issues uh, somewhere in that range, we're reprinting the early Silver Age stories of Captain America. So this issue three corresponds to issue 102 of Captain America. And most of the cover is the same. Obviously, the title is different here. But I had found in a different sale issue two of this volume and I think a couple others. So it's a way for me to get Kirby art granted in a reprint and granted it's got this ink marking here with a date and the cover is damaged here but the way i look at it a couple things one it's kirby two even as a reprint yes is this worth anything no it's not really worth anything but to me it's worth something just because it's cool to have it in comic form and even though the grade is not the best i didn't buy it because it was an investment i didn't buy it to resell it once I stick this in Mylar, that'll improve it right there. And it's just cool to be able to have a physical copy of this story and stories like this that I can read and have in my collection. And the sentimental part of it and the, the joy that this brings me for having Kirby in my collection, again, even in a reprint and even in a low to mid-grade copy of it, that, that outweighs it and is well worth my you know 65 cents to buy that so very happy to find it and you know what if i find another one of these someday and it's a whole whopping dollar or two dollars i can still get it and not feel like i wasted a ton of money uh, with my first copy i did pick up some fantastic four these may have been the other issues that i grabbed to get to my 15 so that i got the discount but a little bit older and I consider this older, right? It's not like sub 100 issues, but to me, I, I start to think, oh, they start to get older when you get below issue 200 for the Fantastic Four. So grab this one. Also got issue 197, still a little bit older. This is kind of pre-John Byrne era, but Again, I wanted to get to the 15 issues so that I could get it for the same price, so it was basically free and just fun to get some older Fantastic Four. And then this one I grabbed, issue 265. This is part of John Byrne's run on Fantastic Four, and it's in good shape. And so I wasn't going to leave that behind because I am trying to build out that run. And we got sort of a She-Hulk cover appearance, just her, her hair from the back. Now we get to the books. These are the ones that I first found with Kirby art. And I haven't really seen this title much before. And if I had, this was the first time it grabbed my attention. This is the Mighty Thor starring in Marvel Spectacular. Again, another 1970s reprint title of older Silver Age stories. These reprinting old Thor stories and I don't know to me that just looked super cool is it beat up yes it's beat up it's got creasing here in the lower right hand corner 
it's I don't know if it's folded under if that's just missing ignore this new mint slash mint this book in, in no way shape or form is it near mint mint uh, I'm guessing that this bag and board has been reused from another book at some point so maybe this was bagless at one point and they just added some bag and board that they had in stock there and reused it here but you got some looks like there was some kind of sticker or something in the top left corner oops sorry for the glare because there's like a little residue there from that but that's just a great cover and again for 65 cents very happy to add that to my collection Got a couple more of these Mar Marvel Spectaculars. Here's issue 10. Again, with more Kirby cover art and reprinting old Thor stories. To Die Like a God. That's a great cover. And then found issue 11. With the Growing Man. And then lastly, Mighty Thor starring in Marvel Spectacular issue 16. Again, most of the coloring and everything on here is pretty nice. It's just this corner that's missing in the top right corner there. But I hemmed and hawed. I probably spent way more time than I should have debating whether or not to bring these books home. These Kirby reprint books. And in the end, it just... I don't know how else to say it. it just made me happy to see them and to know that I could bring these home and add these to my collection for 65 cents a piece. Yes, they're low grade. Yes, they are reprints, but they, they just look cool. And so I'm looking forward to reading these. I have now added yet another title to my wish list. And for those of you who think, oh, Chris, when will you be done collecting? Never. And it's not just because there's always new comic books coming out. There are so many things that as you continue to read comics and read about comics and you discover new things, new titles, new runs, that's part of the joy of this is that it, it continues to evolve and you become interested in new things and find new things to collect and the hunt continues. So I will be looking for the rest of these Marvel Spectaculars. Hopefully I can find them in, in some better grade than I have so far, but very happy to start it off with these four Kirby issues. All right, that's going to do it for me, and that's going to wrap up this back issue comic book haul from Comic Book College. If you're in the Twin Cities or if you happen to be in town for some reason and you have time, definitely pay them a visit. They're just a great local comic shop, and I have put links to their information down below in the description here. Let me ask you, though, as you watch this, are you collecting any of these titles? And in particular, what are your thoughts on the Bronze Age reprints of some of those classic Silver Age titles and stories? Let me know down in the comments. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to be over, I have hand-selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.